Hello boys and girls, uh, this is a very short video with a short derivation and elaboration on the softmax function, you know, this renormalized exponential function um, that is often used, for example, at the output layers of networks, um, which has these nice um, algebraic properties, essentially, you know, you take the derivative and then the uh, resulting um, expression is basically just an algebraic expression again in terms of the softmax functions uh, and i've seen this come up and and, and being uh, like derived in various spots uh, recently also on twitter again and here for example it's a random website that does the derivation and it always looks this extremely messy and I mean, I have used it before in videos myself. I have some, you know, uh, neural network uh, code up uh, videos where I made use of this. You know, you have the softmax, you take the derivative, and then what comes out is some, some this nice product. And if you take the derivative in another direction for another variable, then you have some other expression, and it's always nice and so on and so forth. But these der derivations are like kind of ridiculous. Um, I uh, sat down yesterday evening and uh, take a look at it like if you abstract away some of the properties like the fact that there the exponential is used and so on and so forth so, uh, what remains uh, because I had the hunch that all these nice properties are not essentially coming from the softmax specifics um, um, more from the general form of this function and so in this video I do a, a derivation of this nice relations but it's, it's a lot shorter and it uses a lot less um, of the properties and so that's the contribution here okay so um, I um, list this uh, the, the core of what we're dealing with here the core object what we have here so we have some vector I take it to be here in the reals of dimension n um, we have these component functions and then we take any um, sort of scaling function um, that is for softmax in the end the exponential function s um, but uh, a priori it can be anything uh, and what we do is um, we pick the eth component and we apply this, this scalar function to it and then we divide the whole thing um, by the sum of the, the function s applied to all other components okay and um, why this is nice is that if you uh, you know you, you take this this new object I call it here X um, superscript s right this the scaled component wise and normalized uh, X if you um, sum over all the individual components then you get a sum in the numerator a sum in the denominator and so it's one it's normalized in that sense and if s is positive um, for all inputs, then it also means that uh, this thing lies here in the interval between uh, 0 and 1. And so it can function as a probability. And this is also how it's used, right? And uh, one thing that is also relevant for the derivative uh, co computation that is implicitly used, and uh, which I, I don't see mentioned, is the fact that this thing has a particular form in all components, whatever I you choose, the um, denominator is always the same sum, right? The, the, in the denominator, you have the sum over all components, no matter what I you chose. And so to, to uh, switch from one component of X sub superscript S, I call it here J, to I, what you have to do is you have just to switch out the denumer uh, numerator, right? And so to switch out the numerator, you can take this whole thing, divide it by whatever numerator you have here, and then multiply it. And then you switch from one of the scaled components to the other, right? So yeah, I emphasize that this X superscript S has a bunch of components. They are all sort of non-linear in terms of what you had before, but you can switch between the components once you have one computed by um, multiplying this this ratio of um, this individual s's. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so now to the calculation. Uh, the main thing is is this um, the, the the main core uh, 
aspect of why the derivative in the end looks nice is already in the uh, quotient rule, like it literally just calculus. Namely, you know, the, um, you have a ratio, like any ratio now, f is like f of x is g of x divided by h of x. I dropped the, I dropped the of x here for simplicity um, of notation. But uh, the derivative is then uh, given by this thing, right? You apply the product rule or um, you know the quotient rule by heart. And now here, um, these are two terms, like one is the derivative of g divided by h, uh, one h cancels out here. And the other term is negative, the derivative of h times g uh, divided by um, h squared. And um, what you can do now is because, for example, here you have uh, g also in the numerator and h in the denominator, you can identify f again in this expression, right? So, and if you do this, then you get this expression, right? So what, what I have here is f is just g divided by h. And so if you multiply this thing out, right, then you exactly get this object. So what the only thing I did here is basically I collect all the freestanding h's and rewrite them with f's, right? So this is literally for any function, this quotient rule. And this, if you look at this, this is already of basically of the form um, or what we have here. And now we just have to find uh, what simplifies. So the, the derivative of the softmax, the result is supposed to be this, um, this product in case uh, i and j are different. And this, this sort of uh, product, if they are the same, if the same, they have the letter z here, uh, not, um, not this uh, generic, derivative but so here you already see the structure in there and we just now have to find why that is and it's very simple so uh, note here that um, I have um, expressed the um, the quotient in terms of this object this h minus g why have I done this um, because the uh, special a special thing about the, the um, the uh, denominator here is that this sum of t uh, summands is such that this is a function where each summand only depends on one of the variables, right? So if I take this summand here, the, 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 the bottom there, and subtract, uh, like let's say there are like seven, n equals seven, so there are seven terms, and I pick the, the sixth. If I subtract the sixth term, then the result does not even depend on x6 anymore, right? Because this sum here separates cleanly out the, um, the dependencies of the component of the original x. And so um, therefore, um, for doing this case analysis in the derivative, they are not depending on which component you take the derivative of. It helps if you um, write this, this, uh, um, this subtraction here because uh, whatever g whatever variable g will depend on this difference will not depend on this variable anymore okay that's what i say here and now we have these two cases th that are also happening in the other proofs if um this derivative here I write it here as the operator as derivative with respect to a let's say um is taken and this g also depends on on uh, exactly this um a then uh, you know you can you can take the derivative here and you apply uh, the chain rule and you'll find then that um, this the bottom derivative uh, is exactly one um, so if um, we take uh, this um, f to be this scaled uh, of this uh, of this uh, renormalization form here yeah so if we take f this thing to be this thing here where g is s and um, h is the sum over ss then um, the uh, I'm running out of battery then uh, this ratio is of, of this nice form and as I just argued the difference is zero right because the, the difference removes the dependency and uh, on the other hand if the derivative is taken with respect to another variable then uh, this uh, uh, g prime is zero so this expression is zero and here um, uh, because we have a sum, also only one of these s's survives, right? So um, 
independent of the exponential function. Um, uh, this derivative will always have this nice form, except for these s factors will be there. Yeah, and of course, if you take s to be the exponential function, then this is particularly nice um, because this is the last line here, or this is some other comment. Um, then if you take s to be the, the, um, the exponential function, then the derivative of s is again s, and so these terms are particularly simple, and in particular here, they turn out then to be uh, just uh, literally this just exponential factors and that's how how um, things work out so I talked uh, maybe more than necessary but this is a sort of shorter proof and my, my point of the video is that the nice structure here uh, already comes from um, just the quotient rule being so nice so whatever you take the, the derivative of the quotient you have this sort of nice algebraic structure um, with the scaling, these, these uh, logarithmic derivatives just um, become even more simpler and with the exponential function they even vanish. Okay, so that's for that. Take care.